wisdom consists of all gracious heavenly thoughts of God embodied in Christ for the enlightenment of our souls an ability to communicate this wisdom to others is the best and highest spiritual gift knowledge means to explain the unfolding and the correlation of gospel facts prophecy is not necessarily predicting future events but preaching and teaching the word with power this power we're talking about such comes through or because of the baptism of the holy spirit remember that prophets pastors and apostles are sent to utter the deep things of god for the conviction of sin for edification and comfort In the next three years, we are going to see terrible things, especially on government. We need to pray for the officials for the next coming three years. Because I don't see them, fin- some of them, I don't see them finishing their terms, including the president. We need to pray. It's not a good sign. I'm still saying it. You can judge me. But tomorrow, when you see it happening, don't make me God. Don't even say my pastor so. In the year 2016, on the 24th of January, Apostle Samuel Rabuteng gave out a sensitive word of prophecy concerning the South African ruling party, its subordinates and the president. These were his words. In the next three years, we are going to see terrible things, especially on government. We need to pray for the officials for the next coming three years. Because I don't see them, fin- some of them, I don't see them finishing their terms, including the president. We need to pray. It's not a good sign. I'm still saying it. You can judge me. But tomorrow, when you see it happening, don't make me God. Don't even say my pastor saw it. It's just the grace of God. So please, we need to pray. We need to pray for our country. We need to pray for the leaders. Jesus is Lord. For a prophet of God shall live to see what he has said accomplished. Let us take a look at how the prophecy unravels. I have therefore come to the decision to resign as president of the republic with immediate effect. Even though I disagree with the decision of of the leadership, of my organization, I have always been a disciplined member of the ANC. As I leave, I will continue to serve the people of South Africa as well as the ANC, the organization I have served my, all of my life in it. Shortly after President Zuma's presidential resignation, God poured out his spirit upon Apostle Samuel Rabuteng to give out a warning to the ruling party and the presidential office. This is what he had to say. But I want to warn ANC. I warn ANC. 
never persecute Zuma. Leave him for the better of your organization. I say A and C. Ramaphosa, don't try to be big by persecuting Zuma to go to jail. Because if he can go there, he will reveal things that will make people to hate ANC. You have recalled him. It's the will of God. Leave him like that. Let him stay in Gantla. Never try to persecute him. They will try it, but as time goes on, they will drop the charges. But never try it. Because once you do it, remember he was your intelligence in the struggle. Remember, he knows you better than the way you think you know him. I speak to ANC with my little voice. God is still giving ANC a chance. But the day God say enough is enough, he will make them to do mistakes that will destroy them. ANC is the one that is going to destroy itself. Let's leave it. A warning had been sent out. Therefore, the repercussions of what is done with that warning follow thereafter. Let us watch what National TV had to say as the prophecy continued to unravel. Hello and welcome to BBC News. In the past few hours, it's been announced that South Africa's top court has sentenced the former president, Jacob Zuma, to 15 months in jail for contempt of court. It follows his refusal to appear at an anti-corruption inquiry in February. Mr Zuma accuses the inquiry of political bias and denies involvement in a number of financial scandals. He was ousted as president in 2018 over allegations of mismanagement and systematic corruption. Here's our Africa correspondent, Andrew Harding. South Africa's top court was clear and scathing in its ruling, declaring that the former president, Jacob Zuma, was a manipulative liar who'd sought to destroy the rule of law to save his own skin. No person is above the law, and every person whatever be hair or his rank or condition is subject to the ordinary realm of the, of the law and amenable to the jurisdiction of its tribunals. Jacob Zuma, already on trial in a separate corruption case, now has five days to hand himself over to the police. Please. This is you an extraordinary moment for South Africa. <laughs> Mr. Zuma still has some support here. People who believe he's been targeted as part of a vast political conspiracy. They will try it, but as time goes on, they will drop the charges. But never try it. South Africa's former president, Jacob Zuma, was admitted to the Escort Correctional Center and released in less than two hours. The Correctional Services National Commissioner said Zuma's release was part of a remission program aiming to address prison overcrowding. As pressure from the opposition mounted Friday, authorities and correctional services defended their decision. And the law must take its course. So the law has taken its course with regards to the former President Zuma. The National Commissioner has taken a decision and that decision was not interfered with Neither did we meddle with it. The decision to return Zuma to prison followed a Supreme Court of Appeal judgment, which upheld a court ruling that releasing Zuma from jail on medical parole in 2021 was unlawful and unconstitutional. Minister Lamola said the former leader immediately benefited from a remission of non-violent offenders approved by President Ramaphosa. Myself nor the president did not interfere with the decision of the National Commissioner. We allowed the National Commissioner to 
seek legal opinions, to consult the parties, to read the representations without any interference. <laughs> Friday's twist continued the two-year legal wrangle over Zuma's sentence. Whether the 81-year-old former president should return to jail or have his time under medical parole considered as time served is now up to the Corrections Department National Commissioner. Furthermore, Apostle Samuel Rabdeng spoke out a word of prophecy on the 5th of December 2020, elaborating further on the results that will follow the ruling party's decisions. I see the youth of South Africa revolting. I wept when I looked at the ruling party, Apostle Samuel Rabdeng said. Let us watch the exact prophecy. These were his words. I see youth of South Africa revolting. It will not be good. I see a revolt in youth of South Africa. Please let's pray and remember we are all Africans. I see youth revolting in South Africa for different reasons. The government should tighten security. We are praying for a leading party. I'm praying for a leading party in South Africa here because I'm talking about South Africa in my country. We are praying for the leading party. Unity. I don't want a situation whereby this one will say, oh, you say I did this, you also did this, that one also did this, and everyone there is being, the trust to them is being quenched. I say we are praying against revolt, youth, youth, youth. Carry your youth along. Remember that message of the senior prophet of God. Carry your youth along. Youth revolt in South Africa. In South Africa, as I said before, I wept when I looked at the ruling party. I wept when I looked at the youth in South Africa. I said revolution, I said revolt, revolt. People, revolt. Please try by all means to help our young people. They are getting confused. Apostle Samuel Rabuteng further emphasizes on these words. I wept when I looked at the ruling party. In April the 1st of 2021, Apostle Samuel Rabuteng again gave out a word of prophecy. These were his words. As I said to you, when I looked at our ruling party, I wept. Integrity of this organization is at stake. And when we try to fix, let me put it this way, when you try to fix someone's mistake and do greater mistake, it's a problem. I put it that way. When you try to fix someone's mistake but doing greater mistake, this is a, the consequences I hate are very serious. I'm worried about our youth. Because I see Anger and retaliation start to build up in the youth of our country. Africa, Africa, care for your youth. Care for your youth. This is what I can encourage you for. In the past days, looting has spread from stores to factories and warehouses, ransacking and rioting in South Africa's worst violence since apartheid. 
from the eastern provinces of KwaZulu-Natal to Johannesburg's economic hub. All of the doors are open. People are, are walking in. Highways on fire, skies full of smoke. The police hopelessly outnumbered. Protests started with the jailing of former South African President Jacob Zuma last Wednesday, accused of corruption. His supporters see his treatment as a symbol of the current government's repression. Following the youth riots and property vandalism, one protester said the reason they're protesting is because the former president, President Jacob Zuma, has been incarcerated. If they release Zuma, he says, we would be free. Until then, we keep protesting. But over the weekend, this spark ignited frustration with years of economic hardship, unemployment at 32 percent, and months of pandemic restrictions. And now the prospect of food shortages and hunger. This is very painful, and I don't know what can I say about that. This is not our fault. I don't know what happened to the government, we don't know, but this is not our fault. The government calls the riots nothing more than chaos caused by criminals. There is no grievance, no any political cause that can justify the violence and the destruction. But now it's under fire for not mobilizing nearly as many security forces to tackle this crisis as it did to enforce pandemic lockdowns just a few weeks ago. On the 9th of May 2021, Apostle Samuel Rabdeng gave out a direct word of prophecy to the South African president. Let us hear what he had to say. But uh, we have to look into this one that this our president wants to do with the former president. I'm telling you. If he can do that, if he can do what they are planning to do with that Jacob Zuma, let a hopola manzuaka a five years ago when I said, Leave Zuma alone. You will remember my words of five years ago that says, Hawanang, Lizuma. Leave him alone. The mess he has done, he has not done what you are not doing. But I'm, I'm, saying, saying, I'm saying what Zuma has done, so Zuma he has say. not done what Ramaphosa is not doing. He's not an angel. But Jesus loves South Africa. Pray about it. Thank you. Thank you. You will remember what I said. You will remember. Leave the man alone. Try to fix your problems. Even if he's the one who caused problems, but try to fix the problems. Leave him alone. Because once the president can allow that to happen. His chair will be shaken. He may not see it now, but it will be shaken. It's a matter that now is on power. You control this, you control that. You understand that. Leave, leave that man alone. And if you can leave him alone, you are going to allow God to take him too soon. You understand? It's a parable. But if you bother him, he will leave to become a pain to you. Former President Jacob Zuma took the ANC by surprise when he campaigned for a new political party, Umkonto Wesizwe. Former President Jacob Zuma's decision to not campaign and vote for the governing party has been criticized by the ANC leadership in the province. Zuma surprised many this past weekend when he announced the launch of a new political party, Umkonto Wesizwe, which he urged his supporters to vote for. Zuma's decision has been met with mixed views. 
Sanko and Kwazulu Natal says Zuma had informed them about his unhappiness with the governing party's performance before making the public announcement. Yet again, former President Thabo Mbeki announced early last year that his decision to campaign for the ANC is outstanding. But with how everything is unfolding, his decision is clear. Remember the words of Apostle Samuel Rabuddin, the integrity of this party is at stake. Let us watch how the prophecy unfolds. Integrity of this organization is at stake. In 2021, you had campaigned for the governing party and you said you came back up because they're finally being honest about what's going on. 2024, what, yeah, we're going to 2024, what happens with you now? Do you still go back to the streets and campaign for your political party? Do you still feel it's being honest with South Africans about what's going on? It's a legitimate question. Uh, but when I'm able to answer it today, I'm not sure. It's a legitimate question because indeed, there are many things that are going wrong which are not being attended to. Uh, you can't, I can't go to the, you know, the ordinary people of our country and vote for these people who are doing wrong things. You can't say that. So I'm saying my answer is still outstanding. Because if he can go there, he will reveal things that will make people to hate ANC. Former President Jacob Zuma will not be voting for the ANC in the upcoming election as he is supporting the MK party. He adds that he will not be campaigning for the governing party and speaking through his daughter, Duduzile Zuma, the former president says the ANC has been reduced to an organization that has lost its moral compass. We need to rescue the ANC and bring it back to the organization that we know, love and trust. This requires drastic action. Before stating what that we are going to do to rescue and restore the real ANC vision, let me tabulate a few of the current pressing issues on which I base my distrust of the current ANC of Ramaphosa as a proxy of white monopoly capital, which must be distinguished from the real which must be distinguished from the real ANC. Firstly, the ANC kept quiet when the powers of the president were taken away in the appointment of the chair of the commission on the so-called state capture. This symbolized an opportunistic amendment of the constitution of South Africa. Secondly, the ANC kept quiet when it became clear that the 2017 national conference and the position of president had been stolen or bought by forces outside the organization for an amount of 300 million rand, which the president admitted under oath, found by the public protector in her Bosasa report in which Ramaphosa was fingered. Thirdly, the turning point for me was a misguided statement made by the ANC president that the ANC is accused number one for corruption in South Africa. Neither the leadership of the ANC and the NEC nor the membership at the most recent national conference saw the need to challenge or change that incorrect statement. Fourthly, the ANC expelled its Secretary General using the selective application of the so-called step aside rule, but will now allow the person who is also facing criminal charges to top its list for the next election. Fifthly, the ANC stood idle when 400 black people were massacred in KwaZulu Natal following the avoidable July 2021 unrest caused by the Constitutional Court and Mr. Raymond Zondo due to my imprisonment without trial under the ANC of Ramaphosa. Sixthly, the straw, the large straw was when, due to the public protector's 31 questions in the investigation of the Palapala scandal, she was suspended and then impeached by the ANC, DA and Freedom Front working together. I have now been told that the ANC of Ramaphosa has decided to vote in favor of the impeachment of Judge President Tope and Judge Motata. The ANC of Ramaphosa has declared war against progressive black professionals and intellectuals. A new political party in South Africa will be destabilized or disturbed. I will elaborate later on this matter. 
here in the prophetic I said a new potential political party will be disturbed but their disturbance it doesn't mean the denial a tug of war between the ANC and Mkondo Wesizwe. ANC Secretary General believes that the newly formed party's logo has the potential to confuse voters. This is not the first time an incident like this has occurred. The African Independent Congress was also accused of capitalizing on the ANC's name and colors. But Mkondo Wesizwe says the ANC is shaking in their boots. MK is threatening them beyond. ANC is threatened by MK. They know what they're capable of. They know what President Zuma is capable of. Mm. Even the people know President Zuma. That's the biggest issue that they've got. If, if, MK, if President Zuma was not campaigning for MK, I want to ask the question, would they still be taking us to court? Furthermore, early in January of 2024, on the 6th, Apostle Samuel Rabuden gave out a significant word of prophecy to the ruling party. This is the last development to the ongoing word of prophecy. These were his words. ANC, I see them holding the seat of authority again, but their pillars down there are cracked. What is the meaning of this? ANC holding the, 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 the seat of authority, but their pillars down there are cracked. What can hold a house if the foundation is damaged? It's a parable. Lord Jesus, I pray for our leaders, those who have given them authority to lead us. I pray for my leadership in South Africa. Father, give them wisdom. Give them stability. Give them grace, O Lord. To all political leaders, O Lord, Give them grace of unity to see the need of working together for the betterment of the people. I ask you mercy, Lord. I ask you mercy, Lord. I ask you mercy, Lord. I'm on my knees. I'm crying for Africa. I'm crying for the world. Have mercy, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, you have never left us nor forsake us. You have never left us without an answer. I pray for South Africa. We have sinned against you, O oh Lord. By your precious blood, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us as the country has mercy on us as a country. I pray for all political leaders, all their leadership, all political parties that you have assigned, O oh Lord, for the new year, for this 2024 elections. Let there be harmony and peace in Jesus' name. We pray for our president, President Cyril Ramaphosa, Oh Lord, may your spirit touch the heart of this man. Father, guide this man. Father, resist him not to do anything on his own, but let him be guided by you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.